Starting and running a business is hard, but you don't have to do it alone. Whether you're an established business owner or thinking about starting a side hustle to earn extra income, I am here to teach you how to show up as your unfiltered self, level up your business, and thrive as a mompreneur. Let's embrace the chaos and start enjoying the journey together. I'm Amy Tra, and you're listening to the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Welcome back into the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. I am joined today by Tara Leeson. She is a mom, a business owner, all of the things, and we are going to dive deep into that today. Without further ado, Tara, welcome to the podcast. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to join you on this today. So, Absolutely, it's my pleasure. So tell us a little bit about yourself. As we were chatting before hitting record, you've got multiple things going on. So tell us more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I run two businesses. Uh, My first one is in fitness and I'm a women's um, at home fat loss and fitness coach. So all of our workouts are under 30 minutes because it's, you know, usually busy moms that I work with and then easy nutrition options. So that's what I do over there. We do like monthly workout challenges, all those kind of things to get you really motivated. And my second business, um, which hasn't been around as long, but is basically business coaching. I don't love that name business coach, but um, it is business coaching. However, I specialize in offers and programs. So it's really about building out your signature offers so that you can make an impact and you know have something that you're really known for as well as building out your offer suite to allow for a really great client journey keep those amazing clients that you have and increase your income that way so those are the businesses i run and then i'm also actually i still work casually as a nurse on the side do you sleep at all I know. Yeah. A lot of people ask that. (laughs) So I try to get it in when I can, but yeah, I also do that. I just didn't want to lose my nursing skills. So I keep that up somewhat and then also do the businesses and I have two kids. So, and a husband. (laughs) That's awesome. So how did you make the transition from nursing into owning now two businesses? So it's interesting, actually, because I, I'm a nurse in the ICU. So with COVID, it got quite interesting and hard. And um, there was a point where, and I, I guess I should say, I wanted to be a fitness coach for a really long time. This was something that I had wanted to do probably since I was like, I want to say 20 Um, so many, many years and I just hadn't taken the step to do it because I was doing all these other things. I had my nursing degree. I was like, well, you know, that wouldn't really be the move, but then COVID came, which is almost everyone's story, right? That kind of led to an upheaval for everyone. But when that happened at the very beginning, we weren't sure what our lives were going to look like. And I realized that as a nurse, this was not, that wasn't what I wanted because there was talk of us having to isolate from our families, them shutting the hospital down and actually essentially locking us in there for a period of time because they had no idea how bad it was going to be. Um, And when that started happening, that was the point where I was like, no, no more. Because my family comes before everything. And there was no way that a job was going to take that away. Yeah. Like that was just the, nope. Exactly. One of your non-negotiables, you know, yeah. <laughs> work yeah. will always be there. Exactly. And you, yeah, you can always get another job. You can do something else, but you can't replace your family like that. That has to come first. And there was no way that I could sacrifice that for a job. 
So I knew it had to change and I decided that it was time I got my certifications and started my business (laughs) so I could have more freedom and work, you know, when I wanted to, um, so that it wasn't that sense of, you know, you might be taken away from your family or having all this pressure and it just, the nursing system, well, not nursing system, but healthcare system really changed. And you really felt how much of a pawn you were within that system. And it just, the whole thing was not, it was not good and it was not okay. Yeah. And it was not something I wanted to be part of Yeah, <laughs> full time. So yeah, mm-hmm. I can totally relate to that because my background is in healthcare. Um, and yeah, it, it was, COVID changed things. And in a way yeah. that was such an eye-opening experience that really made me reevaluate things. It made mm-hmm. me reevaluate why, why am I doing what I'm doing? What are my non-negotiables? There's always going to be jobs out there. I can find ways yeah. to make money. My family comes first. So yeah. that's amazing that, you know, you, you also took that step and just mm-hmm. did it scared. You almost have to take a leap of faith because it's, it's terrifying, but yeah what's the other option? Like if they're locking you into a hospital, like, Oh gosh, yeah, Tara, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. I know it like, is looking- a lot. And yeah, luckily it never, it obviously never came to that, mm-hmm. but there was a long time where it was so anxiety producing going yeah. into work, not knowing what we were walking into. And I was just like, I can't do this. Like Right. And what you're bringing home. Yeah. That was scary too. Exactly. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you had this eye-opening experience, you started the first business and then how mm-hmm. did it evolve into starting the business coaching as well? So for the business coaching, it's kind of funny. And it's a lot of what I actually talk about in business coaching. Um, my fitness business wasn't feeling good. The way that I had it set up, I was following kind of someone else's model of things. And it was, you know, you had to do the one-on-one coaching. You had to do the group coaching. Um, It had to be this certain way. And so I did that following a business coach that I had initially. And it really didn't feel good. It wasn't how I pictured my business. It wasn't how I wanted it to run. And I had been actually helping people with their businesses on the side, not getting paid for it, of course, but, you know, helping them. And I loved doing it. And I was actually finding it was very strange. I was going to a lot of master classes and, you know, different free things that people were putting out and really looking at it from the business side of things instead of how can I incorporate this into my fitness business and I just re- find it so interesting and I love helping people with that and I was having I guess results you know helping people with this on the side and when my fitness business wasn't feeling good I was like well it's time to you know try something else, get into something else, because that's my whole thing. If it's not feeling good, I'm not going to continue doing it. Right. And so I went into, I decided to do the business coaching. Um, and when I did that, I actually, I went off my fitness account on Instagram for a bit because I was like, I don't even know if I want to go back to this. It just felt so bad. I still had some clients. I was still working with them because obviously I'm not going to just terminate their contracts or anything, but I really needed to find a way that it felt better. So when I started the business coaching thing and, you know, really thinking about things and reevaluating them. I was like, well, why can't I change my business model into something that I actually like? It sounds so obvious, but it's something that, you know, a lot of people don't think that we have permission almost to do. 
but you can always change it. If it doesn't feel good, you can always change it. And I'm a huge proponent of making it feel the best for you because then you're going to want to show up. You're going to want to do it. It's going to be fulfilling. So now I totally changed it and I have actually a membership. Um, I do a group coaching program still And I have a Facebook group that's really engaged and involved, and I absolutely love it. And then with the business coaching, I figured out that, you know, as I started doing that, I was really enjoying working with people to build out their offers, their programs, offer suite, and focus on those kind of things for them, and really feeling also filling the gaps of like foundational business strategies and making sure that that's in place so that your offers and programs actually sell. Yeah. So good. And I appreciate that you mentioned, you know, it just didn't feel good anymore. And so many Mm -hmm. times, like you said, we get trapped in that, like, okay, well, everybody's saying I have to do it this way, but that's what we have to remember is that our business can look any way we want it to because it's our business. And yeah, I think coming from jobs that were so structured that had to look a certain way, working for someone else, it's hard to get out of that mindset Mm -hmm. and make that shift. So what was the moment for you? Where did that pivotal shift take place where you're like, no, no, it's, it's time for me to design my business how I want it to be because it doesn't feel aligned. Um, I was finding that I really, I was like, I don't want to talk about macros anymore. I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to do like everything just felt blah. I was just like, I don't want to do this, but I still was so passionate about fitness. Like it's such a big part of my life. And I realized like, I just have to find a different way that actually feels good to me. And what I actually did was when I got back on Instagram, I took about a month, month and a half off. And I just kind of didn't post anything, didn't go there because that account also wasn't feeling good. And when I really sat back and took that break and evaluated things, I realized to go back on it, I had to kind of shut a lot of people off. And I went in and I muted a ton of a ton of people so that I could figure out what I wanted to do, how I wanted to come across what my message was without all of the other noise playing into that. And that helped immensely. Oh my gosh. Yes. And I I love how you mentioned it's, it's okay to take a break from social media. Mm -hmm. We get so wrapped up in these algorithms that I have to post, I have to show up, I have to, have to, have to, that it comes from a place that just doesn't feel right. And Mm -hmm. honestly, for me, when I start to get overwhelmed, that's one of the first things I do. I stop consuming because when I get too much information, I know I jump right into comparison mode that I am comparing my chapter one to someone else's chapter 20, but it's like, okay, let's just put those blinders Mm -hmm. on and put my value out there, put my goodness into the world. And it dies. It's refreshing then. And it's like, okay, here we go again. You know, like you have to take back that control. So I'm so glad that you mm-hmm. mentioned that and doing what feels good to you and yeah. not necessarily what everybody else is telling you because it's noisy. It is such a noisy world out there. It is. It is. It's absolutely insane. And if you, try to consume all of that, I feel like you just would get nowhere because it's insane. It's conflicting Mm -hmm. and you really just have to focus on what feels good and what feels the best for you because that's going to come across the best too. Yeah, exactly. And it makes you stand out then too, which is what you Mm -hmm. want because if you're doing the same trend, everyone else is, if you're doing the same voiceovers, people are just going to keep scrolling. You're not actually Mm -hmm. attracting your ideal client. And then let's circle back to the whole, you know, consuming piece. Do you find a lot of your clients get stuck in that information overload? They're taking all the courses, they're consuming all this information, but they're not actually implementing. They're not putting Mm -hmm. things, the the action into it. They're just consuming and then they're overwhelmed. So they don't take action. Yes. 
Yes, I definitely do. And that's something that we really work on. And the way that I actually structure it is we look at a, like we get a solid plan set up. So especially looking at a certain offer, for example, we set a deadline. When do we want this to launch? Work back from there exactly what do we need to do? Give deadlines, you know, and there's not all of this looking at a million different things and thinking about, oh my God, what should I do here? Or what if this happens or whatever? Huh. We set the tasks and we execute them. And actually, another thing is we like, I also, um, we look at different platforms and see, you know, for engagement for, cons I guess, consuming different things, but essentially connecting with other people. You know, we have specific timelines. So there's one of my clients that does 20 minutes on LinkedIn, 20 minutes on Instagram every day. And it's specific to connecting with people. It's not scrolling through. It's not, you know, getting lost in other people's posts and, oh my God, maybe I should be doing it this way or that way. It's specific to connecting because that's what you need to do and not be getting lost in all of the yeah. other things that are out there. Yeah. You know, it sounds like, you know, by creating that plan, it really does bring the intentionality back into it and lets you have that plan. So you can start to take action and execute Yeah, because, you know, let's face it, there are a million different ways out there to get to the same outcome. And most of them can work. If you put in the work, you will get results. The problem is, yeah. is we're chasing shiny objects constantly. And it's like, oh, I need to try this. Oh, I need to try that. Mm -hmm. We don't give any one thing a fair shot at working out. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And I talk about that a lot too, like during your launch, you know, it's very similar how people, they're constantly almost getting bored with what they're doing and then yeah. looking for something else. So if the launch doesn't go well in, you know, the first two days, you're trying to get on to the other, to the next thing, or you're thinking that it failed. Well, but it's only been two days. Right. Right. And there is so much out there with the shiny object syndrome. You have to talk about yours a million times for it to stand out so that people will actually hear it above all of the other things that they're looking at. So. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that because I, I feel like that's where a lot of people hold themselves back when launching something mm -hmm. is they just don't talk about it. You know, it's like yes. they put one post out there and expect like, okay, everybody's going to come by it. You don't know what the algorithm showing them. You don't know if that got sent nope. to spam. Like you, there's so many factors beyond your control. Yeah, mm -hmm. you have to talk about it. And guess what? If somebody doesn't want to hear about it, they'll just keep scrolling. Well, no exactly. Exactly. Like you've got to keep going. And you know, your ideal client may not have looked at your stories the one day that you talked about it. So what if they missed it and you don't right. talk about it again? you've missed that huge opportunity. Like you've got to just keep it going and really build that momentum. Yeah. We, we tend to be so hard on ourselves for our own worst mm -hmm. enemies. And then we tell ourselves these stories that aren't even true. And it's like, just like you said, your ideal client may not have been looking at your stories that day. And that's not a reflection on you. That is totally no. out of your control. So mm -hmm. thank you for mentioning that. One other thing I want to dive into before um, we conclude for today is just how do you juggle it all? So, you know, <laughs> raising a family, working PRN, running multiple businesses, what tactics or tools do you use to navigate that? I have a lot of calendars. <laughs> so I have my planner that has all of my business tasks in there that I need to get done. And I plan it out. My planning day is usually on Sunday. So I plan out everything for the week. I plan out, you know, when I'm going to get my workouts in, what the kids have going on when we need to get them places, um, what my work tasks are, what days I'm working for nursing. And we also plan in date nights. And we plan in specific family time blocks where we all unplug 
and you know watch a movie together play a board game together things like that so that we make sure that we actually have like time that we spend together and then it's not just getting a bunch of tasks done exactly and that's so important and something i think a lot of us neglect to do we neglect to plug ourselves into our calendar. We neglect to put our relationship mm-hmm. into our calendar. Mm-hmm. And we get so caught up, especially when you are running a service-based business from your home, it's easy to constantly work. I mean, because it's always yeah. there. So that temptation is there. So I think it's super important to be intentional and carve out that time and put it on the calendar, physically put mm-hmm. it on your calendar. So you don't have an excuse because if there's white space, we'll fill it in with something. Yep. Yeah, exactly. I love that tip. Tara, this was an amazing conversation. Where can we learn more? Yeah, definitely. So you can follow me on my fitness account at Tara Leeson Fit. My business coaching is Tara.Leeson. And I have a Facebook group as well for my fitness, which is Tara Leeson Fit. And then I guess dash at home, fat loss and fitness. That is amazing, Tara. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. And until next time, stop dreaming and start taking messy action. You've got this. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode.